Have you ever missed your window of opportunity to accomplish something that really mattered to you? Whether time is slipping by if you wanted to have kids or get married, or you feel like you're in the wrong career, or you should have saved and invested more by now, or maybe finished an educational goal or started that business already, it can be so easy to beat yourself up and be riddled with fear as the clock just keeps on ticking. On this episode of the Successful Women Think Differently podcast, we're going to talk about making peace with lost time, how I learned to do it, and some tips for finding your own peace and a future you can get excited about, even if it looks a little different than what you'd planned. You know, it seems like sometimes your deepest desires and dreams take the longest. So long, in fact, that you might even convince yourself that it's not that important to you. You know, a lot of times when we step out on faith with a goal, we have an idea of how long it's going to take. And typically, often, it is so much longer. Have you been there? (laughs) I've been there quite a few times. You know, sometimes it's things beyond our control. Sometimes it's that you procrastinated. You just let time slip by. I mean, we're not perfect. We mess up. We waste time sometimes. We make choices that derail our best plans, and we wish we could have a do-over. Sometimes we end up thinking, what on earth was I thinking? But although sometimes we get second chances, we never get our time back. And so that ends up leading to a few problems, a few unfulfilled desires. It leads to disappointment, the disappointment of a dream unfulfilled, whether that dream is a relationship or motherhood or business or a different career or any opportunity that perhaps won't come along again, or maybe it's not going to come along again the way you imagined it. It's not just the disappointment, though. It's also the regret If you've ever found yourself saying, I wish I had, and you fill in the blank, right? Our hindsight is 2020. We look back and we think, oh, I could kick myself. I wish I had done. And you fill in the blank of whatever it is. And then a lot of times it's just hard. It's hard to maintain hope. It's hard sometimes to create a new vision if the vision that we had isn't going to come together. It's hard to adjust when you've had your heart set on something in a specific way or by a specific time. And I don't know where this hits for you, but whether it's in your finances or relationships or with your health or perhaps it's something in your career, a professional goal that you had, it hits all of us. It hit me and it hit me so hard. I really had to learn to make peace with lost time. And I have. And that feels good. I mean, it's the lost time that was biggest in my life has just become a part of my story. And I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't have some of the wisdom that I gained. I wouldn't have the family that I have if the things that happened that caused me to lose time had not happened. And so I'm at peace with it. But going back, (laughs) way back, You know, I often joke that I grew up imagining myself as Claire Huxtable, (laughs) you know, the, the lawyer mom with five kids on the Cosby show. She was everything I thought I wanted to be as an adult. Sharp, successful, grounded, attractive, a wife, a mom with a fun family. You know, it's interesting because by the time I got to my senior year of college, I realized law was not my path. I had actually planned to go to law school, and I realized, oh, I don't think that's what I want to do. So I went to grad school for journalism, building on my on my writing gift. My vision was to be an author with a successful business that I could run from home. That was my vision at 20 years old because I wanted a career and I wanted a family, but I wanted to control my schedule so I could have time for these future children that I was going to have. And so... I think about being that young, having that vision. I mean, I think it's just because I've always loved children. I love contributing to their growth. I love making them feel valuable. 
I love seeing them discover their strengths and and really getting clear about what their own, you know, God-given path is. And so as a teenager, I remember thinking, okay, I'll be married by 28. I have no idea where I got that number. Uh, but I remember thinking as a teenager that that's when I would get married. And so by the time I was 26, I had written my first book. By 28, I had sold a business. I was starting the one that I'm running now. My career path had come together, but the love path wasn't clear. I had, I think, sort of always thought that it would just happen. I don't recall anyone telling me, hey, you got to plan for this, right? You got to plan for your career, plan for your finances, you know, plan to be in shape. But I'd never heard plan for love. Like, how do you plan for love? I didn't know. And to make things harder, it felt like I was constantly dealing with people's comments uh, in my 20s because I had a successful career that somehow I did not want a family. Like, I don't I don't think people make those comments to successful men so much. But as a woman, I think it's fairly common because of so many women I've talked to over the years who've said the same thing, like, because you're successful in business or in your career, somehow that's all you want. It was like as as though somehow my interest in business meant I wasn't interested in anything else. So I did marry. I married at 30, two years behind schedule. <laughs> I say that jokingly, <laughs> but it didn't last. So at 36, there I was, not married anymore and uh, without kids. Talk about lost time. Have you ever hit the hard wall of reality that you will never get time back and you badly want that time back? There's a, a Bonnie Raitt song called Nick of Time that always resonated with me. And the, the whole song speaks to me, but there's a line where she says, life gets kind of precious when there's less of it to waste. That would just, I would just hear that over and over because it's so true. But when you're in a situation and you realize you've lost time that you're never going to get back, boy, those words, they cut because they're so true. Whether that time is, you know, time you feel like you wasted when you were, you know, working on your education or those years that maybe you could have done something different with your money and you didn't or that you could have shown up differently in a relationship and you didn't that you could have pursued the thing you really wanted and you didn't. So when I wrote It's About Time, The Art of Choosing the Meaningful Over the Urgent, I wrote a passage about the sting of lost time and what that, what that really looked like for me. And I want to read it to you because whatever it is uh, that maybe you're beating yourself up about or maybe you have some anxiety around, this might relate. As one chapter of my life closed and a new and uncertain one began, my heart stung with the bitter reality. The long journey of healing, finding true love, marrying again, and bearing children would likely outlast the ticking of my biological clock. I desperately wanted those years back, yet nothing I could do would ever grant that wish. For a while, I felt like I'd had the emotional wind knocked out of me. My thoughts spiraled. I anxiously did the mental math on my biological clock. The results were painful and deeply distressing as I added up the years it could take if I held out hope for my personal dreams of a future that included a happy marriage and children. My thoughts were like two versions of me battling it out. The faith filled me and the fear filled me, plotting and guessing, hoping and fearing methodically and logically adding up the years to figure out if my dream was still a possibility. You know, the experience of missing your window of opportunity, falling behind or regretting decisions can create an anxiety that unconsciously rules your relationship with time. Whether, whether it is the relationship you now regret staying in for too long the way you wish you'd just stuck it out and finished your education, or past financial choices that left you working harder than ever to catch up to where you think you should be by now. The feelings are real. I felt as if my hands were stretched towards the past, 
hoping to grab hold of it and somehow recapture time. Thinking back, the time felt so recent. It was right there. And yet it was gone forever. So what happens when time slips out of your hands? When there's a real ticking clock that will eventually run out? Thinking in very stark terms about what it means to lose time can actually help you value it more deeply and ultimately make future decisions more intentionally. For me, that was my goal. How do I, number one, make peace with lost time? And number two, how do I make decisions for my future that set me up in such a way that I won't be regretting the lost time, that I won't be looking back wishing that I had perhaps done something different. You know, when it comes to thinking differently on the issue of lost time, there are a few things we have to embrace. Um, I mentioned disappointment being a big part of this, but disappointment really is about expectations. And so when you shift your expectations, your disappointment begins to dissipate. For example, maybe the deadline that you gave yourself for getting to a particular milestone, personally or professionally, if you shifted it, it would shift your disappointment. Maybe that deadline worked for others, but maybe it's different for you. Maybe it looks different, and that's okay. You must embrace the time you have Now, that was a huge, huge breakthrough for me. It was a shift in my thinking. When I stopped looking back at the closed door, I talk about this on a previous episode when I was talking about the five commitments of resilience that you have to decide. I am not staring at the closed door. When I decided to turn around and face forward, no matter how much fear that gave me, No matter how disappointed I felt, no matter how frustrated I felt, no matter how sad I felt, when I decided to face forward, everything changed. It sounds almost cliche, but I remember I had moved to Atlanta. I was about 37. And at that time, that just felt like, oh my gosh, I am 37. Like, that's a big number. And one day I was, I I woke up, I was having that thought. And I talked with a friend and they're like, oh, well, this is the first day of the rest of your life. And I'm thinking, okay, (laughs) that wasn't really what I was thinking or wanting to hear. But when I hung up, I thought it is. This is the first day. What is the new chapter I want? There's an opportunity in this to learn, to grow, to write that next chapter very intentionally. So there are three practices that can really help you embrace the time you have right now. Number one, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Give yourself the grace to be human. Say to yourself, literally say it out loud, I forgive you. I forgive you. Sure. Perhaps I could have made different choices, but for where I was at that time, these are the choices I made. I choose to learn from it. I choose to forgive myself. When you say that to yourself, when you give yourself that grace, some of your stress dissipates, things change. Have you looked yourself in the mirror and said, I forgive you? I forget, you could have done something different, but I forgive you. You didn't. For whatever reason, you didn't. It's okay. Number two, have some self-compassion. Self-compassion. So if someone you cared a lot about lost time in circumstances similar to yours, what would you say to encourage that person? You'd probably be gentle. You'd probably acknowledge the hardship. And that's what I'm saying to do for yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Give yourself the opportunity to, sometimes you got to mourn what you've lost. I had to do that. Like those six years, those six childbearing years, they were gone. And that was a bitter reality. And yet 
I decided to make peace with it, that this was my unique path. And that I also wasn't giving up on the dream. The dream just needed to look, maybe, maybe needed to look different. And number three is gratitude. Gratitude is so very powerful that look at what time you have now and what choices you want to make with what time you have now. So let's say that your lost time has to do with finances. And you're like, I just, I, I haven't done a good job with this. I don't have the money saved I should have by this point, but you have right now. So be grateful for what you have now, even if it's not as much time as you'd like to have. What choices do you want to make with the time that you do have? That's absolutely critical. Maybe you think you should have changed careers 10 years ago, but that doesn't mean you can't still make a change now. Sure, maybe you could have made healthier choices for the last 30 years. But you know what? You can make healthier choices starting today, right now. Be grateful for that. Because if you're listening, you're still here. <laughs> and if you, you're still here, you still have an opportunity to do something different. So there's a really great coaching question. One of my favorites, if you've listened to me for any length of time, you may have heard me ask this one before. It's a question that applies so often that's a great one to keep in your back pocket to coach yourself with. But as you think about whatever the area is where you've lost time and you need to make peace with it, I want you, whether it's in your finances, your career, your relationships, your health, maybe even your spiritual life, looking back 10 years from now, so you're, you're fast forwarding, it's a decade from now, think about how old you are, where you are, what you're doing possibly. Looking back 10 years from now, what will you wish you had done? What will you wish you had done? You know, when you really make peace, it frees you to move forward and write that next chapter, even if it is a reimagined vision. And so that's one of the things that I did that was super powerful. I decided to reimagine the vision. I decided that I wasn't giving up <laughs> on the vision. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be Claire Huxtable. I likely was not going to uh, have five kids. I definitely wasn't going to be a lawyer. <laughs> but could I still be a mom? Absolutely. Did it happen exactly the way I thought it would as a teenager or in my 20s? No, it didn't. Am I raising the kids I believe I was meant to raise? Yes, I am. And am I at peace with that? Yeah, I am. And I think it really started with the shifts that happened from one, forgiving myself, having some self-compassion, and having gratitude for the big life in front of me. It has been such an adventure. It's amazing to me, the adventure that I've been on. So... Looking back 10 years from now, what will you wish you had done? And even if the vision that you move forward with is that reimagined one, one that embraces the reality of your past and the hope for your future, the truth of the matter is you can still have peace and still have joy. In fact, you may look back and realize that some of the things that have happened have happened because there were lessons to be learned or paths that you needed to cross that you wouldn't otherwise cross. I don't think we have to know all the reasons why things happen the way that they do. But we do have to be willing to embrace our reality and to move forward one step at a time, being intentionally. So what have you made peace with and what vision do you have now? Maybe you've already made peace with some things. Maybe there's a a vision that you've created and you're like, Valerie, thank you. This was, this was confirmation for me. I'd love to hear what your hopes are for the future. If you haven't written that vision, if you, if you found yourself stuck looking back, staring at that closed door, I'm inviting you right now to turn around and face forward. There is so much ahead for you. You don't have to know exactly what it is. 
to believe that there is something exciting uh, in store, that there's something more, that you're still here for a reason. And we don't always control what unfolds and when it unfolds, but we do get to choose how we show up, the gratitude that we show up with, and our willingness to forgive ourselves for not being perfect, for not always getting it just right. We make that as a choice. So I'd love to hear from you. What are your hopes for the future? Write it in your review of the podcast, share your thoughts. And if there's another topic you'd like for me to address here on the podcast, please tell me when you write your review. I read all of them. If you want to find the show notes for this one, (laughs) if finding uh, your peace and making peace with lost time is something you want to do and you're like, Valerie, I I need to remember those three. I'm driving. I'm I'm on the treadmill (laughs) while I'm listening. I haven't taken notes. Check out the show notes. Just go to ValerieBurton.com forward slash podcast. Until then, just know I've said a little prayer for you that you'll find peace and you'll make peace with any lost time that you've experienced. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Successful Women Think Differently podcast. I'll talk to you soon. 